You're listening to The OutQ, a 21 News journalist perspective on a top news story. Good afternoon. It is Friday, May 31st. I'm Assistant News Director Justin Mitchell, and this is The OutQ. And this has been an incredibly busy news week, as anybody who's been paying any attention to the news flow this week has, has, can tell you. Um, we had the Chase Bank in downtown Youngstown explode due to what appears to be a, a gas leak of some kind. NTSB is still investigating exactly what the cause was, but we had several people injured and one killed. And so with me today to talk about breaking news and how everything has to stop and, and how you have to approach it professionally, seriously, and quickly, our veteran news videographer, chief videographer, Pat Connolly, and Derek Steyer, our main anchor. Um, guys, you were both on the scene the day of this explosion. Um, well, you know, I was even over there for a little bit. Um, Pat, I, I want to start with you just yeah. to describe what happened because you actually were on scene not I, in news mode at first. I was right down the street. I was 100 yards away. A minute earlier and I would have been walking right where that happened. Um, so the video that we have on our website that shows everything blowing out, that would have blown out right across me and one of our coworkers. Um, we heard this noise and we turned around and looked and everything, I mean, everything was blowing across the street. I thought a job trailer fell off the roof. I mean, I didn't know what it was and immediately I grabbed my phone and I called back to the station and I said, you need to get crews up here. I don't know what happened. A building either collapsed or blew up. And I started running for the station to grab my camera and get back up there to see what was going on. It was pretty wild. Yeah, well, we were sitting, we were about a minute away from, you know, this was a fairly typical day. We had a watchdog story that we were working on, and we were about a minute away from a meeting that we yeah. had pre-planned. Yeah, I had my Did, paper yeah. pad. I was coming up for the meeting. You're and, standing there, yep, paper pad in yep. hand. Madison is running late on a shoot, right. and I'm texting her going like, hey, you know, we got this meeting in a minute. I hear scanner traffic about a possible explosion. And so that always perks your ears up, but there's a lot of things that sound like an explosion. Right. So it's not necessarily actually right. an explosion. Right. But what I remember what I heard, and, and Pat, you kind of described seeing this, is I heard that them say that whoever called it in, that their hair had blown back. Oh. Like that there was like a gust of, and I said, well, that sounds like this might be legitimate. Like there was right. a force behind whatever this was. Right. So, I mean, Derek, from that mode right. to what happens now? Yeah, no, I mean, for me, I know, I know you guys were, were handling the logistics. You were trying to figure out, you know, what crews or who was, I know Pat was saying, I'm going to go check it out. I just kind of went back to my office and said, you know what, it's just a block up the road from our station, which is extremely nice. I was like, you know, I'm going to walk up and just see what's happening. And I get up to the corner there on, uh, on Market Street, and I was just like, holy mackerel. I just couldn't believe what yeah. I saw. Yeah, it was... and, and, you know, I, I saw you, um, and I want to say... Was there, was there another photographer, or were you the first one? I was you the, the first, first one. I don't know if there was another Bob, one out there. You're Bubba, Bubba was there. Bubba was up there too, right? Yes. Yeah. And so, um, and then shortly after, you and Sheila and I think Robert came walking up too. And I was because I was going to get some pictures for yeah. the web and try to get that sent back. Um, and you know, we got there before they were even taping things off and pushing us all the way back. Right, right. When we ran <laughs> over there, because that's what happens in these, is, I, is you have to do a lot of immediate thoughts and For jump sure. into action because you don't know what you're dealing with. Right. So you've got, to, you've got to think about, you know, you've got to get a story up. You have to find out what's going on. You have to consider public safety. Right. So you need to know about anybody that's in the building and how serious right. this is. But also, could there be a secondary explosion? Could there be, could the building fall? You really sure. don't know. I mean, when we ran over there, you, there was a real concern at that point in time that, you know, there's a whole section of the bottom that's missing. Right. Yeah. Could this come down? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And so you're thinking about all of this all at once, and you're also thinking about the safety of your crews. You're thinking about what the angles of the story might be. And this is all happening within seconds in your, in your brain. Um, it's a little bit of overload when you're there. It really in, yeah. in the right in the center of it. Sometimes you have to take that time out to take a breath and say, okay, now this is what we need to do and what you know to just to regroup 
in your own head. I mean, I've always said breaking news is the most exciting thing. Yes. It's an exciting part of, of being in television news media, but obviously <clears throat> clearly the most challenging. Yeah. I, I mean, like you said, there are so many things to go over logistics wise, crews, what are you, and, and it's just, it's, it's almost overwhelming to that point. And, um, but if you have a good plan, I think that's, that's the best thing that a newsroom can do. But I mean, to that point, how do you plan sure. for the unknowable? Right. Sure, no, for sure. So you can have, all, what you end up relying on is instinct and experience. Yeah. Uh, because you can't, for instance, you know, we've all covered breaking news. We've right. covered major breaking news many times. Never covered a building blowing up in downtown right. Youngstown. Right. Right. And so you also have to consider how to be respectful of the situation. We had no idea how many people were hurt. We have since learned that one was killed. Right. And you want to do, you, you want to honor those people right. in your coverage also that they can't just be lost. That's something that i think gets lost sometimes in uh in some organizations or in national news is that the people involved become numbers they become statistics you know this this young man akil drake was a 27 year old guy on his you know from what i could tell his first you know professional job right. And that can't be lost in any of this no. and you've got to think about those kinds of things in the moment who might this be so we're chasing this stuff back, uh, you know, back in the newsroom. We're chasing it out in the field. Right. We get a lot of other reporters out there. What's it like when you first get on scene, particularly when there are several crews that have to arrive? Just talk a little bit about how you determine, well, I'm going to get this and you're going to get this right. and, 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 and where to position yourself. For us, what we do is we kind of split up. You're covering that side, I'll cover this side. Um, you're paying attention to what everybody, you're trying to look for where everybody's at, at least for my guys. Yeah. Um, certain guys are, are doing, they're with reporters, they're trying to find people to talk to to say, hey, what happened here? What did you see? What's going on? Other people are getting video and we're, we're, we're trying to cover it completely. That's, that's the tough part. Um, but like you said, we got there early and there was nothing up. And right. I mean, we could hear the gas line. Right. I mean, it was hissing so loud a block away, you could still hear it. We had no idea. I mean, there were people just walking around. They were walking over by where all the damage was and the police who handled the situation, they were all very calm, very, I mean, and it was hectic for them too. They were running and moving and bringing people over and setting them in the grass. Um, it's just, it gets, to the point where, you know, you're like, okay, this is really bad. And then they moved us all back. And I think like you, to your point, photographer wise and reporter wise, it's a little bit differently. Absolutely. You guys are obviously trying to get the video. If, I, if I've got a camera in front of me, I'm trying to shoot as much as I can. And I think that can be overwhelming because there's so much going on in such a wide, wide area. But for me, if I'm a reporter there and my photographer's getting the video, I'm looking around for people and mm -hmm. I'm trying to see who's watching, who's doing this, who's doing what. You're not gonna get the officials right away. They're no. obviously dealing with the immediate tragedy and what's going on. Um, but you could go try to maybe find somebody that looks like they may be a witness. Or you just start combing through all the people watching so you can say, hey, what did you see? What did you hear? And then when you stumble upon somebody that's like, oh yeah, I was 10 feet away when the building exploded, then you've got an interview and it starts to establish a little bit about uh, you know, what happened and, and, and the reports that you're about to go on air with. I remember you know, doing those live reports in the newsroom yes. uh, that we did uh, uh, on, online. Um, and we were very careful of what we could report and what we couldn't report because we, were, you know, we heard somebody say, oh, bodies being pulled out. Well, let, let's take a step back. Right, we don't want right, to go right, right on the air with bodies being pulled right, out. Because it turned out that we were talking about people being rescued, for but sure. they were very much alive. Right, for sure. And the, we've talked about that, especially in the newsroom, the, dif the, the difference between using that kind of verbiage, too. And choosing the words very, very carefully. For sure. And the other thing is that um, information will be from rock solid sources sometimes and then still change. For you know, sure. I mean, our earliest reports were that everyone was accounted for right. and there were no fatalities. Right. And I got that personally from. Fire Chief Barry Finley, right. who an hour later was talking about one person who was missing, and an hour after that was talking about two who were missing, and then ultimately it turned out there was one missing, and it ended up being the young man who, who was deceased. Right. Now, it wasn't 
you normally can't rush out there with something until it's you know sort of triple check but in a breaking news situation right. people need to know the situation as quickly as they can and the right. fire chief's about as solid as you're going to get but his information's continuing to right. evolve also right. <clears throat> right and you know you mentioned people yeah. everybody has a different angle on the yes. story yes. and you've got to determine what all those angles are the first responders the city officials people who witnessed it people right. who were inside people right. who survived people who lived in the apartments above trying to assimilate all of that and make sure that you're telling a complete story and then i'm you know back in the newsroom we're thinking about well, is there any like, is there an EMA person we can talk to? I need to know if we need to disseminate evacuation information about something like right. this. Right, we're almost leaning upon, you know, kind of leaning on the city officials or whatnot to tell it because uh, I remember word came in that there might be what a, a two mile evacuation. Yes, uh, that came from a city council member. I right, believe. it did, it uh, did, and, and so there was there was talk of, you know we might even have to evacuate our station. And we were going into... See, I, no, I didn't even know. You did yes, not know that. We were discussing. Yeah. So this is all going on while we're planning a coverage plan. Um, me, Sheila, the news director, and uh, the engineers are all discussing if we have to evacuate, and our general manager, if we have to evacuate, obviously in news, we have a role we have to play right now. So if this building isn't safe, we have to figure out a way to broadcast. So we're figuring out how we can do a remote broadcast, even right. if there's no video right. somewhere else. And uh, we were in the middle of working that out when it, we got word that uh, yeah. it did not need to happen. But that's a lot to juggle, obviously. Mm -hmm. Correct, <clears throat> absolutely. I mean, again, we're kind of at you know the mercy of, of what officials are telling us and how safe it might be but i remember immediately when we were doing those first reports talking about the structural integrity of that building i mean that's i, I think i don't know that was of paramount concern i think uh, for me oh, a yeah. lot of people there was is that building going to come down yeah well you know i, 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 had, I had visions of 9 11. i watched some uh some ypd body camera video today and while they are there are first responders initially in the basement area and you hear one of them say i think this building's coming down yes. so everybody thought that at the time right. i heard that too I, I watched that video it was i mean but the thing that blew me away was in those videos were how dedicated all the people were everybody yeah. was like i mean i showed you that one clip yes. where there was a police officer who said he could see somebody in the basement and they said gas leak gas leak everybody back and they tried to find an alternate route to get to the basement. And they said, you can't go this way. And he said, I'm not waiting all day. I'm going down there. Right, I mean, it right. was, I mean, all of the police, uh, and I don't know where they all came from because there were the deputies were there. I think they were from the courthouse. They came over and immediately jumped in and started helping. They were helping the fire department. Yes. He, the one guy grabbed a ladder and was bringing it over. Um, and he's yelling, calling stuff out, holding ladders for the fire department. And I don't know if it's a surprise to me, but it was just, it was incredible how calm they were. It was mm -hmm. kind of organized chaos, if yeah. you will, I guess. And just, I mean, they, they just went right at it like they knew exactly what they were doing when you probably, they had no clue. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, yeah, I mean, you don't know what you you're dealing with. You don't know what, what you're about to step into. All you can do, I, I imagine for them, is the same as it is, you know, obviously a different job function, right. but the same as like this thing I didn't expect just happened. Right. And there's a certain... It's, it's not a clarity because you don't quite know what's next. I mean, I can't tell you how many times during the course of that day I'm walking around going, okay, what are we not thinking of? What right. are we not thinking of? Right. You're always trying to think of what right. it might be. But you do, you know, you, you might be having a slow day or maybe it's kind of a, you know, a lighter day. And when that something happens, suddenly it's like, all right, I don't know what it is, but I've got a certain amount of experience, certain amount of instinct, go. And for yeah, and for us in a newsroom, if you've got other reporters on stories, you you pull them off, right? I mean, we you pull them off, and and this is your story now because obviously this is going to be the biggest story of the day. Yeah, and you have to sort through all of that on the fly. Right. It's just go, and we will sort out the angles and who's right. going to talk about what. Right. You just got to go. Right. right. Now this is just this week's major <laughs> breaking news, obviously, but I mean, you guys have both had lots of experience on other major breaking news stories. Um, how do they all, what, what are the similarities between jumping into action and what is different every time that you notice? Well, you know, like East Palestine. Yes. 
you know, we didn't really know what was going on. And then guys call back and say, oh no, this is, this is big. We can see it. We're, we're five miles away or two miles away. And I can see the flames. You need to send everybody down here for this. And every, everybody goes. Um, but it's like, we also start to talk to each other. I'll call, like if you're sending me on something mm -hmm. and you say, hey, Pat, go check this out. And I'm there, then you're sending Derek and let's say Ron out. Ron will call me or I'll call Ron and like, hey, what's going on? Where should we go? And, and we're kind of planning it out. It's just, you, you go into work mode. It's very, it, it's very fast paced, but you go into, you, you just start chipping away at, at all the things you need to do and cover and And, and I think you touched done. on it too. Uh, communication is yeah. the key. Communication and making sure that this is what this crew is doing, this is what this crew is doing. Uh, but in a sense too, everybody, you're just trying to get everything you can possibly get. And, and we give each other heads up. Oh, absolutely. Just like Derek was saying, okay, I might be shooting video and he's talking to people. He might see something and say, hey, Pat, you know, you, we need to move back right. or hey, Pat get that over there right. it, it's a separate set of eyes so it's it's just a it's a whole team working together to make it all come together and mm -hmm. then we're we're touching base with you <laughs> and saying hey this is what we got and then we're not thinking about something you're like well what about this and yeah. then then we move into into that mode but I think there are a lot of similarities. It doesn't matter what the situation is, whether it's a, uh, a homicide, a shooting or whatnot, or a, or a train derailment or an explosion. You're on the scene, you're trying to capture the video to tell the story the best way that we possibly can, but we're also looking out for the people. And, and, and there may be a family over here, and there may be witnesses here. You see somebody crying over here, okay, I'll make a mental note or write down some notes. Okay, maybe when there's time, let's try to go over and chat with them if you find it appropriate to approach them or whatnot. Um, and so I think those are a lot of the similarities, but again, for us in television news, we're trying to tell that story through you know, the video that we get. And sometimes it doesn't translate. Yeah. So we're shooting video, we can see it, we're there. Yeah. We're in the middle of a tornado. We're in the middle of it, we can see everything. But shooting video, yes, you can show a house that was blown down but you can't show 20 houses that were blown down. You know, it's, it's not, it, it's hard to really convey. And that's the trick and that's the tough part of what we do is trying to get that to convey to the viewer, hey, this is really bad, or hey, this is really good, depending on what the story is. Um, and with a situation like the explosion and when they taped us off, we were what, a block and a half, two blocks back? Oh, yeah. More than that, I don't even know what it was. You know, we were able to get the 21 News drone up in the air to get uh, a different angle right. and show kind of more of the destruction. We talked about going around the back side of that building to a parking deck to try to get a different angle and everything. And so, yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of moving parts yeah. with it to try to convey that message. Now, I mean, a lot of what we've talked about so far today has really been the, the logistics of it, you yeah. know, and, 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 and the adrenaline that goes yes. into it. You know, what, I, what I'd like to end on, though, is, and I always try and steer these around to this, this larger point is, why is this important? Why do we do what we do? I mean, I, so there, I'm sure there's people who are watching this thinking, well, okay, so it seems like you got rocks in your head. There's some catastrophe <laughs> and you're one of the people who wants to be on scene. Right. Doesn't that seem kind of morbid <laughs> or isn't that kind of, you know, off? Why is it important? Well, I mean, I, just, I think it's our duty. It's, 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 it's the reason firefighters rush into the danger instead of running away like everybody else. We're, we're that conduit uh, of information to our viewers and it's our job to keep our community, the people that, that uh, watch us informed. Um, and you know, maybe it's a safety thing. There might be people nearby that are watching right. us uh, that you know, we, you gotta get out of there, get evacuated and, or, or whatever it may be. But again, it's the information. We, we are that, that conduit to give people the information about what's going on in their community. And it's our job to, to be fair, accurate, complete, and, and tell it the best way that we possibly yeah. can. That, that's perfectly said. I don't know about perfect, but... Uh. Well, but it's just yeah. like weather. I mean, yes. oh, why, why are they standing out in the storm? Why are they standing out there when the wind's blowing during a hurricane or whatever? Or why are they, why are they out in the snow? So that you don't have to be. Yes, exactly <laughs> that. Because don't you... I, I find, because even, even smaller things that are not, you know, breaking news, just sure. smaller things like, you know, shooting a car accident, for instance. Right. 
you know, I, I, I've heard people say, and I, I would even argue that I've maybe used to flirt with being in this camp. Oh, that's, you know, that seems sensationalistic. Why do you, you know, why, why do we have to do that? But I've been driving and I've thought about things I've seen and it has stopped me from doing what I otherwise might have right. done subconsciously. Right? I mean, yeah. and if you think about that, and I'm sure you guys have seen things out in the field and it's subconsciously planted something in your head where you've been in a, you know, there but for the grace of God situation, but you just didn't take a step that one direction right. because of what you learned. Right, right, for sure, for well, sure. Another reason, another thing that we do, for example, the, the news alerts that go out. Yes. Okay, you're, you're traveling somewhere. I-80's closed because there's a 10 car pile up. And I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm exaggerating, sure. but. Well, sometimes yeah. we've covered those. I mean, we have, or, or the highway's frozen over or for whatever reason. And we're letting people know that and people need to know that because then they'll take an alternate route and they'll be like, oh, well, you know, what's happening? Why am I doing that? You know, so it's important for us to get the information out there so that people can use it. And yes. that's what we do. And that's another element of the breaking news and how it's changed some is that breaking news, even 10, 15 years ago, meant I need to get everything we can right now for the next broadcast, right. which was always never more than a couple hours away. And if it was huge, huge news, you might be breaking in on air. And then that was really immediate. But now... It's That's right not now. how people get the info. They, it needs to be accurate. You need to thought, have thought of every angle and you need to have it right and you need to have it right now. Mm -hmm. That push needs to be out there. That video needs to right. be out there. People need to know what they need to know now. Yeah. Telling you at 6 that you need to avoid <laughs> downtown Youngstown at 3.30 right. is... Doesn't do any good. Right. You need to provide context by 6. Right. We live in breaking news mode all the time. There are no deadlines. The deadline's now. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. No. It's completely evolved and changed over the years. And, oh, and, yes. You know, like definitely. Like we talked earlier about, you know, going up and getting pictures back for the web because you know our web folks are writing stories immediately and and yeah, I mean, people are are getting their news on their phones and social media and every other way now. They're not waiting for the next broadcast. So yeah, I think it's really. Uh, I mean, elevated what we do and really put that sense of urgency uh, for us in terms of, of breaking news as well. So I would agree with it's, that. It's yeah, it's it's a hundred percent now, and it sharpens us. All it the does time. for sure, and and I I think the a great part of it too is is kind of when things start to die down, we then get together and chat about what went well. Yes. What didn't work here? Right. Let you know what I mean. Back to the point of the plan. Yes. Maybe you can't have the plan for when it's going to happen, but if you've learned from previous yes. breaking news, you can maybe sort of have, okay, next time this happens, we I can do this. I want to do this or I want to do that. And, and we'll ask. Well, we we talked about it earlier today, just, you know, our post, you know, the, the, yeah. the post event meeting where we said, okay, we could do this better next time. We could do this better next time. Right. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're <clears throat> hearing from people, you know, saying things that are complimentary, you know, oh, you guys did a great job during whatever event it might be this week or any other week. And generally we're sitting there going, ah, let me tell you how we <laughs> could have done better, should have done better, sure, you know, sure. and, and we're always going to be that way I because, hope so. it's, because it's public service. For, so we right. have to do better. We yeah, have to do sure. the best that we can. Yeah. This is not a sensationalist station. It's not at its best a sensationalist mm -hmm. medium. Uh, you know, not, it's not to say that there aren't those who do sensationalize, but we're always going like, man, we, it, it, the things that if you if we feel like we didn't do something well, it's because we feel like it underserved the public right. that we're supposed right. to serve. Correct. And breaking Correct. news is when it's most immediate. You know, you right. can I, I love investigative reporting. You can work on that stuff for months. Right. You need to think just as sharp right. in a matter of seconds. And, and, yeah. and that's the biggest point. It's who, who, who can think on their feet the fastest. Yes. Yeah, is, is, is why it's so important. Well, I mean, this is uh, the investigation into what happened this week right. is going to continue for a while. There will be things that we have a little more time to think about and dig deeper into. Um, but in the meantime, I will uh, bid everybody a, a good weekend <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. And in the meantime, anytime you need to reach us with anything we should be looking into, anything you want us to know about. If you've witnessed breaking news that we didn't that we're not on scene for and you think we need to get there. 
then don't email us. I'll give you the phone number, 330-744-8821. I would hate to think that we missed an email by a half an hour. But things that take a little bit more digging, news at WFMJ.com, watchdog at WFMJ.com. And with that, we'll see you next week. This has been The OutCue.